Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on the physicians and practitioners who are redefining medicine through their integrative, functional, and holistic approach to health and well-being. We are happy to welcome Lynn and Michelle Krauss, husband and wife compounding pharmacists located in Arkansas. Michelle describes herself as a functional pharmacist with over 20 years experience, and Lynn is a board member of the Arkansas State Board of Pharmacy. Well, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having us. So I understand you are both pharmacists? Correct. Yes. And where are your uh, pharmacies? Southeast Arkansas, West Central Mississippi, Mississippi Delta area. All rural settings. And are they compounding pharmacies? Some. Some okay. of them are. Well, tell us a little bit about it. So we, um, we've been compounding for the bulk of our career. We went to compounding school within six months of graduating pharmacy school. And that really, I think, was the beginning of our functional medicine training, although it wasn't called that then. Um, and, it, you know, everything just continues to mushroom out and you're never done learning. So the compounding really opened the door to understand hormones, which, you know, of course rolls into everything else. So that was, that was the beginning. Um, but then we joined A4M in 2011 and decided to do the fellowship program and the advanced fellowship. So that's when the formal training came in. For us. And it's added a lot to our practice. In what way? Well, it's let us better serve our patients as far as um, helping them with the drug therapies that they're on, finding drug therapies that they might be able to get off of that uh, are no longer required for their situations. Um, a lot of times patients are taking medicines uh, at a length of time and they're not really sure why they're even taking them anymore. Mm -hmm. Of course the drug induced nutrient depletion um, is in our wheelhouse as pharmacists but I don't think it's, um, it's appreciated as much as it should be so we try to teach our pharmacists about that. And being in rural settings, we're often the first and only place that the patients go to seek health care. So I'm looking at spider bites, I'm looking at yeah. a lot of things and deciding, yes, go to the doctor. Um, but the training here has also allowed me to work with their physicians uh, in a different way and encourage wellness. Uh, there's not a lot of wellness in our area or basically, you know, in the United States at this point. but it's surprising the influence that you can have if you spend a few minutes to talk to somebody about the importance of their drug therapy, of the drug-induced nutrient depletions, and the things that they can do that are no cost to improve their health. They just need some encouragement and the knowledge of knowing what those things are. Yeah, and most of our customers slash patients know us. We're in the communities. It's a small community. And oftentimes they'll walk in the store with their labs and they'll say, Okay, my cholesterol is high. What can I do to get it down? You know, all right, my, my blood sugar is running high, or the doctor says I need to go on insulin. What can I do to prevent this? So it's got them thinking that, uh, you know, the disease process is not a terminal process, but they have options. And, and so there is that uh, patient, doctor, pharmacist triad. And um, you know, sometimes I would imagine it might be a little tricky uh, for you to. Um, kind of talk to the doctor. You, you don't want to ever overrule something that, that he's, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Talk a little bit about that. Well, again, you know, a lot of people think being in a small town is a disadvantage. It has its advantages. So we know the physicians, you know, at the local clinic. And we have a, more than a working relationship with yeah, them as well. And, I, and I've often sent patients in with a list of labs that I would like to have done. But of course, I talked to the doctor in advance. And so this has been going on so long that um, they're not surprised. And then subsequently, I have seen a little shift uh, with the providers in that they're actually ordering vitamin D more often. They're ordering B12 levels, even, even though sometimes there are issues with that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so they know that we're talking nutrition, um, optimization of labs, these parameters with our shared patients. And so far, they have not felt threatened. Um, we have time to spend with patients. 
and um, and that's a commodity. So yeah. I think they appreciate anything that we can do that um, makes the outcome for the patient better. And we're accessible. I mean, we're in a small building on Main Street in about eight towns. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. right. So it's very accessible, and these people uh, generally uh, of the mindset that uh, um, you know we are somebody they ask before they go to the doctor a lot of times. Wow. So. That's a nice position to be in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so are they um, <clears throat> uh, aware of integrative functional, you know, medicine, anti-aging medicine? It's growing. Yeah. It's growing. I mean, we, we certainly talk about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh -huh. not, not so much, but I went to my college of pharmacy or our college of pharmacy, we graduated together about seven or eight years ago, and I said, do you know what functional medicine is? And of course they said no. And I tried to explain the premise, because uh, it can be called a lot of different things. And that's you know what it's being called now. But it's just good medicine. It shouldn't be us and them or all of these sects. It's just good medicine. And um, so in that same conversation, I said, well, do you know what an expanded cholesterol panel is? No. And I said, we should be teaching it. I know these things aren't going to be on the NAPLEX. They aren't going to be on the board exam, but our pharmacists need to know these things to help their patients. And so as of last spring, um, there's a new class at our College of Pharmacy. It's an elective called Functional Pharmacy. And I've had a lot of fun putting that together and trying to teach third year students a little bit of what I've learned here. That's great. Then we have a rotation. So we're preceptors at both colleges. So we get students to come through for months at a time that work under us and they uh, get a feel for how it may or may not be used in a, in a community setting. I believe that, uh, and this is probably passe in most circles, but um, clinical pharmacy has been around for a long time and it's been in the hospitals, but it's my belief that clinical pharmacy uh, is much more useful in the community. Um, I believe that uh, that's where uh, it, it, it's going to have the greatest impact. Right, yeah. And, you know, back to anti-aging integrative functional medicine, it has all these different names and perhaps there's some differences between them, but really it's all about personalized medicine. And, and uh, that's what you do as a compounding pharmacy. It's not an off-the-shelf, it's, it's personalized. Yeah, talk a little bit about that if you would. Well, Michelle, let me say this. Michelle likes to refer to medicine as a thoughtful act to create order. And I think that's always been uh, the most apt way of explaining it. And I'll yeah, I'm, let I'm, you go. I'm sure I may have heard that at one of the lectures here. And when I lecture to pharmacy school students, I say, this is my definition of good medicine. It's a thoughtful act to create order. And so if you agree with that, then telling someone the importance of, of going on a 15 minute walk is a thoughtful act that creates order. Um, sharing with someone breathing techniques, even though that's not quite what we do, but just allowing them to understand that they can impact their health with lots of other things other than drugs. There's definitely a place for drugs, but we see polypharmacy every day, all the time, um, and it's, it's sad. And, um, Prescription drug use is the number one reason for cognitive decline in the United States. And so I think that as pharmacists, we, we take a lot of pharmacology in school. We learn mechanism of action. And so we should be in the center of all of those things. And as genetics have come to the forefront, pharmacogenetics intersecting, it's perfect. It's where we need to be. It's not on Main Street USA yet, but it, it can and should. Be. and it'll come and so I think those are the things that Lynn and I have tried to look ahead get educated on teach our pharmacists to a degree but also teach our patients and our patients are often willing to do anything we ask them to do within reason so um, as pharmacists we have a, accounts with a lot of the different lab companies and that, that that's been very helpful um, understanding that the intersection between genetics and the drugs that someone is on is awesome medicine. 
it's to me the way we should be doing it. It's not practical at this point. But um, those, those are things that I'm not only learning here, but plant the seed in my brain to say, go learn that more. That is very applicable within your wheelhouse. And I do think that sometimes um, within the medical pie, there's occasionally some uh, mistrust or miscommunication or everybody doesn't want somebody else stepping into their territory. And I think we work really hard to stay in ours. Um, even if we just stayed with drug-induced nutrient depletion and pharmacogenetics, uh, there's so much to be done right there. Mm -hmm. Is there, uh, in the communities that you serve, is there a, 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 an obesity problem? Oh my goodness, yes. Yeah. We serve as Southeast Arkansas, Louisiana, and Mississippi. So of course, that's sort of a trifecta. Right. Yeah, it's, it's incredibly difficult. And um, at times, you know, I just would laugh and go, well, what am I doing trying to do a wellness practice in the sickest part of the country? Um, but the answer to that is that's exactly where I should be, yeah. you know, because it, that's not really being told by uh, most of the providers. Eat right and exercise to me is a disservice to the patient because it, they don't know what to do with that. Right. It has to be much more personalized. And, and how about the uh, physicians that you're working with? Are, do you feel as though uh, they're open to learning from you as well? Do you, do you give them any of the research articles? Do you kind of help to uh, open their eyes to the anti-aging functional integrative medicine? Yes, I did a lot more of that early on. Um, I'm open to share anything. I mean, transparency, if there were functional medicine providers on every corner, we would all be busy. Um, but more often, it's just the system that we're in. We're all so busy. And when we do get home, we're tired. Yeah. And I, you know, I'm not sure why Lynn and I chose to add this on top of the other things that we chose to invite in our lives. Um, so it hasn't been hard for me to want to learn more but I can't impose that on someone else, the physician, patient, or my pharmacist. Right. So always willing to share, always. Um, but some, I, th I think the, the disconnect, if there is one, is not because they don't like what I have to say or do. It's more of they don't have time to go learn it. Um, and so they lean on me to fill in those gaps. And there's a trust there that's developed over time. You know, that, um, you know, I don't know what they're looking at, but, you know, the, you know from the uh, provider standpoint, I don't know what they're looking at, but they help so-and-so, and so that's that. You know, there's times where, you know, because a lot of us went to high school together. I mean, you know, or went to grade school together. And so, you know, the doctor and the patient and I might have played peewee football together or whatever, you know, so, or against each other. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, you know, it's, they'll say, well, you know, uh, one of the most popular examples is a good friend that, uh, you know, he's diabetic, he's uh, uh, just terribly noncompliant, and uh, his physician, also a friend, was fixing to put him on insulin, and he said, hey, before you put me on insulin, let me go to Lynn and Michelle, let me see if I can put that off. And three months later, he was not only off that, but his sugar's been corrected, he tests still, but he's doing well, and you know, that's his choice. But uh, I think at the end of the day, anybody else coming in there has gotta be willing to make the, the choice and the decision to do right, and he embraced it fully. Right. You know, and that has, in my opinion, nothing to do with years of education. That just has to do with want to and desire, because I know plenty of educated people that don't do anything to take care of themselves. So it, it sounds like um, the work that you're doing is, is very needed and essential in the community that you're serving. And um, congratulations on, on taking that bold step. You're, you're making a difference in the people's lives in the communities that you serve. Thank you. We well, certainly you. hope so. Yeah, I um, thought when I graduated pharmacy school I would want to work to a certain age and then retire. And I realized pretty quickly that I love this and I don't ever want to retire. 
And so when I'm speaking to pharmacy school students, I tell them, congratulations on your upcoming graduation. Best of luck with your career. But when you walk across the stage and you think you're finished, you're not. You, um, you have an obligation to the patients you serve to always continue to learn. And so that's what functional medicine has really given me. And I love it. So I look forward to doing it. Um, I say the tombstone will be my diploma. <laughs> and I think that no matter whether it's functional or integrative, this aspect of health care, if you can do one little thing for a patient that makes them feel better, makes their therapy more effective, uh, it broadens or makes you enjoy what you do so much more because I think prior to our involvement in functional and integrative medicine, we felt hemmed in by what we could do for our patients mm -hmm. and our friends. Yeah, so this is much more gratifying way to practice. Yeah. Well, thank you again for taking the time to join us. Thank, thank you, you too.